Okay, if you're watching this video, you're probably watching for one of two reasons. First could be you stumbled upon this video first, or two, you came across my other fork line method video and wanted a little bit of an easier version. This is going to explain the same method and go through the very similar process uh, so you can gain some experience with it. I want you to be able to get comfortable with the fork line method and get away from the Punnett squares. This is a more reliable method and it's easier and quicker. So we're going to look at a trihybrid cross using the fork line method. Now, this same can be applied to more or less complex um, equations. The key part is you need to understand what a monohybrid cross is and also the FOIL method from math class. We get the first outer and inner last to distribute things and not use a Punnett square. The problem is a pollinating plant has a genotype big A, big A, big B, big B, big C, little c, is crossed with another plant of genotype, which is homozygous dominant for A, heterozygous for B, and heterozygous for C. What are the expected genotype frequencies of the offspring or seeds produced from this resulting cross? Now, since both parents are homozygous down for the A allele, the process shown isn't quite as efficient as it could be, but this is intended to, the, to help those that might be struggling to understand this method. Odds are you probably haven't seen this in middle school or anywhere else. This might be your first exposure to that, and that's okay. I want you to be sure that you can understand it. If you were to do a Punnett square, it looks something like this, which is gets very complex, very hard to keep track of things, and increases the odds for an error. We want to try to avoid that. This uh, fork line method is a lot cleaner and a lot easier to understand once you get over the initial hurdle of seeing that something different in the Punnett squares you might be used to. So step one, identify the trihybrid cross into three monohybrid crosses. One for the A alleles, one for the B alleles, one for the C alleles. Remember, we're going to use the FOIL method and not Punnett squares to generate this. Looking at plants, so we're looking at generating the genotype for seeds. So starting with the first one, because both parents in this case are homozygous dominant 100 percent of the time that's going to be the resulting of the offspring they're called true breeding in that sense for that allele at least for the b because we have a homozygous dominant and heterozygous half the time we'll have big b big b and the other half the time will be heterozygous big b little b c gets a little more bit more complex here with both being heterozygous a quarter will be homozygous dominant the other quarter will be homozygous recessive and half the time it'll be heterozygous. So how do we put all these genotype frequencies together? Well, first off, we have to identify the possible combinations of genotypes. This requires the pairing of genotypes from all the monohybrid crosses previously completed. Here we're talking about plants, we're looking at pollen grains. So 100% of the time, it's always gonna give a homozygous dominant for A, half will be homozygous dominant for B, half will be heterozygous for B, and then for C, remember, a quarter of the time, It'll be homozygous dominant, quarter the time homozygous recessive, and half the time heterozygous. So we start with the fork line method. Well, since 100% of the time we big A, big A, we just write that one down. Now we want to distribute that to our B alleles. We know that half the time it'll be homozygous dominant for B, the other half heterozygous. Now we need to get a little bit more complex with the C alleles. And we notice that here. We are including all three of those possibilities for all three of the options. Now, to get to the seed genotype, we simply multiply these percentages or these fractions right across. You notice by doing that, it's easy because the first one's always one. One times a half times a quarter would be an eighth. One times a half times a half would be a quarter. One times a half times a quarter again will be an eighth. Not only are we carrying those numbers, and I color coded those um, accordingly, uh, we're also carrying around those alleles. So you can see that one is that big A, big A, indicated here. The half is the homozygous dominant for B, and the quarter is the homozygous dominant for C. So this is how we develop our seed genotypes with this fork line method. And you can see once you get comfortable with this, how quick and easy it can actually be. It's a lot more reliable than a Punnett square. So the simplified version here, we take these fractions and turn them into percents. 1 divided by 8 times 100 will give you 12.5%, and you do that for the rest here. Now, getting back to the question, what are the expected genotype frequencies of the offspring or seeds produced? Well, that would be indicated right here. You notice you have all of these percentages with these genotypes perfectly aligned and all set to go. 
if you were to add these up, you would also get 100%, which is a way to check to make sure you calculated or accounted for all the seed genotypes. Now, if you want to test your skills, you can go to my other fork line method example. We'll look at this cross. I'll be sure to put uh, the link in the description so you can look at this. The key difference here is the alleles. One parent is heterozygous, the other one is homozygous recessive. And you can see how that changes things, and hopefully that helps you better understand and get more comfortable with this fork line method.